Hello everyone, and welcome to the first episode of Trading Card Game Mechanic Analysis. So what exactly is this series going to be about? Well, there are a lot of different features that go into a trading card game, and due to this, making your own game can be very difficult. However, there are similar features that each developer typically uses, and in these videos, I'm going to be breaking down what some of these key features are. For this first video, I'm going to go over what I refer to as combat cards. Now, they've gone by many different names depending on what TCG you play. In Magic, they're called creatures. In Yu-Gi-Oh, they're called monsters. In Pokemon, they're called, you know, Pokemon. In Sorum, mind the shameless plug, they're called fighters. In your game, they may be called something like warriors, champions, legends. Literally, whatever you think would be a great name for them, use that. But why do I refer to all of these different cards as combat cards? The reason why is these cards are the ones that are almost always in combat with other cards. And these cards are typically the ones that will be active on the field for the longest. So in most cases, the mechanics of the game will determine the goal of how to win. And how to win the game is almost always spearheaded by these guys, the combat cards. These cards are your army. They are your soldiers that are running into battle, and these are primarily the cards that are either dealing damage or destroying your enemy's card. But now, what makes up a combat card? As I previously mentioned in one of my other videos, how to make a trading card template, the big three features of any trading card are the name of the card, the card's picture, and the card's effect or ability. So we're obviously going to include those pieces to our individual cards. But anyways, what are some other features of combat cards? Stats. The stats of a card determine how powerful they will be for certain games, strategies, and playstyles. Some of the most common stats that are used nowadays are different variations of an offensive and defensive stat. Most commonly known as things like attack, damage, power, the offensive stat, and defense, guard, armor, or health for the defensive stat. Now these stats will vary between different games, but when they are typically included, they all usually revolve around these similar themes. So in regards to the offensive stat, this is how much damage that combat card will deal to either the enemy player or the enemy's combat cards. And on the other side of this coin, we have the defensive stat. This stat is usually how much damage that a combat card is capable of taking. There are also other kinds of stats you can include on your cards as well. These stats can display what kinds of roles that combat card is the best in. So now, because I can't think of any games that do this off the top of my head, I'm going to use my own Sorum cards to explain this. So a Sorum card has four stats. They're Might stat, Altruism stat, Trickery stat, and Health stat. Cards with high might can deal a lot of damage. Cards with high altruism are good at healing and raising stats. Cards with high trickery are good at dealing bonus damage and nerfing stats. And cards with high health determine how tanky they are and how much damage they can take. But what other kinds of features are on combat cards typically? Another big feature of combat cards is their element. Depending on what kind of game you decide to create, you can have different kinds of elemental systems. In Magic, Pokemon, and Yu-Gi-Oh, they typically do this and is shown here in these lovely visuals. Anyways, the first step of determining what types of elements your cards can be is identifying your elemental system. So now, just for the sake of time, I will provide a very small elemental system to show what this is like and how this can work like. Let's call our elemental system Rock, Paper, Scissors. The elemental system usually determines what your cards will look like. For example, our rock cards could look like this, our paper cards like this, and our scissor cards could look like this. And of course, there can be different variations of this. Typically, elemental systems can influence the cards by either changing the card's layout, the card's color, or by placing a certain symbol on the card. Sometimes, it can even do everything that I just mentioned. In some cases, though, your elemental system can have strengths and resistances, and even weaknesses. And in other cases, it lets players know that this card will have a specific playstyle. Noteworthy feature of your combat cards and this part is kind of minor, but it can impact gameplay or it can completely affect the synergy of the game. Anyways, this is what I like to refer to as classification. Classification is much more of a lore-based feature that you can put into your card. Much like your elemental system, it can be seen on your card by creating a little symbol or even altering the card's color. In the case of my own game, Sorum, I just included it as a little section of the card. In this sense, it shows the player what region this fighter is from and what vocation that fighter is. And right now in the game, these are all very minor, irrelevant pieces. There aren't any abilities right now that impact the fighters or sigils, depending on what regions or vocations the fighter's from, you know, yet. 
But for getting back on track, let's use a rock, paper, scissors example again. Let's say that our card pointy rock gives the following effect. Target all rock buddies on the field, they become immune to paper attacks for one turn. This would be a way that classification of cards interacts with the game. We would essentially use this effect to target all cards that are classified as a rock buddy, and then they would gain a certain effect. Anyways though, those are all the features that I will cover within this video. I hope that you've enjoyed it, and I hope that it gives you some ideas when it comes to making combat cards. And don't worry, I'm still going to make additional videos in the series, so be on the lookout for those. But that is all the time that I have for today, so I hope to see you all again next time. Goodbye everyone.